time, English will pass a milestone. The millionth word will be added to the language. It might be noob, it means apparently a neophyte, or it might be economics or seatmates of size, people whose bottoms are so big they need two airline seats. Or it might be none of them. In fact, the whole thing may just be a ridiculous racket got up by a bloke in Texas with a convenient bit of software. But it does testify to the rude good health of our language. Our culture correspondent, Stephen Smith, has this. Hello, I'm a BBC radio announcer. In my job, I have to read out the English language, including all sorts of long words and that. You could say that my tool is the English language. Thanks to English, we have words to describe all the things around us. For example, clouds and cliffs. Cliff can also be the name of quite an old pop singer. You see how versatile English is. You know, it seems as if a new word is coined almost every day. We've had flipping. Susan Boyle became Subo. Gordon Brown, it said, go bro. We're approaching, so it said, the millionth word in English. But which word will it be? There's never, ever been a golden age of English. And we always like to look back and think it existed in the past and rules were rules and, you know, we need firm linguistic government now. Um, but if you, as I always say, if you look back to Shakespeare, he was criticised so much for, for verbing, you know, the thing of turning a noun into a verb that people hate today, whether it's texting, uh, blading, solutioning. New words come along all the time. I have to get used to them so that I can read them out like what they're supposed to sound like. From the alphabet soup of new words out there, trained lexicographers are poised to identify the millionth word of English, based on how often it's used and how widely. What the hell can a slum dog possibly know? Slum dog is just one of the words we've acquired from international hybrids of the language known as Chinglish and Hinglish. I heard some teenagers say, oh, you're such a slum dog. And I thought to myself, either I'm becoming exceptionally old all of a sudden, because, you know, the last time I heard slum dog was a derogatory term to be used. But here, you know, they were high fying one another. Um, you know, another word that I'd really want for personal reasons to be included is, I've heard it's in the running, is chuddies. Now, that's a Hindi word, but it basically translates into underwear or panties. <laughs> We're not above a little light lexicography ourselves. Could this be the lucky millionth word? Can you tell me what that is? Oh, I've, got, I've got a clue. Sheikonomics. Yeah. Econic, economics of chic things. I like that. You like sheikonomics? Sheikonomics. Yeah. That's the word. That's the one, is it? Yeah, I like that. If it's what I think it is, is this looking chic despite budgetary constraints? Um, Bang on, yes. There are Top recessionistas marks. out there, you know, people who um, are fashionistas in spite of the, the Great Recession, as we're calling it. They're frugalistas, same thing, people who manage to look great on a, on a, a tight budget. Cheekonomics, the ability to maintain fashion sense amid the financial crisis. Should we try another one? Sure. sure. Okay. Noob. Noob. Now, Isn't that like a any... private school? Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's like a private school word for an idiot. <laughs> We've had some answers on that. That's, that looks like a um, new boobs or something like that, but don't call me. Well, that's me. the best answer I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Noob, a disparaging term, an inexperienced person. But are we losing perfectly serviceable old words to make way for the new? You know, I think that's a good question. I mean, again, I would say that, um, you know, English has always, always moved on and we'll always lose uh, words that, um, you know, that are our personal favourites. And some of them are the most beautiful, in my view, too, in the English language. But the one thing I would say is that it is incredibly circular um, and that a lot of English words have shown remarkable longevity and, and they change meaning over time, too. I like all words in English, especially North at Sierra and South at Sierra. Well, with thanks and apologies to David Myers from Radio 4, we're hoping to be joined in a moment or two by Paul J.J. Payak, president of the Global Language Monitor behind the one millionth word idea. But we are joined immediately by Professor David Crystal, a leading linguist who's published his autobiography, 
Just a phrase I'm going through, and he's brought along some of his favourite dictionaries. How nice of you. Um, this is rubbish, isn't it, this idea? Absolute. The biggest load of chicken droppings I've heard in a long time, Jeremy, I have to say. I mean, I, ad I admire people who uh, take the trouble to learn languages, to count words, to be fascinated. That's what I earn my job. After, that's what I do for a living, after all. But to say that the millionth... The, the English... The, the millionth word came into lang English language years ago, decades ago, probably. So what do you reckon it is now? I reckon it's about a million and a half now. I mean, here behind me, I've got the big Webster Dictionary. That's got, you know, 500,000, 600,000 words in it these days. The Oxford English Dictionary, which I don't have with me, it's just too heavy, has got another 600,000. Now you think, well, they'll be the same then. Not at all. Less than half the words in those two dictionaries are the same. So we're up to about a million already, let alone the specialised dictionaries that are around. Now, why is it that English, and this sounds an idiotic question, but if you look at the, the cumulative total of words estimated in various languages, English seems to have more or less twice as many as Chinese, for example, ten times as many as French. Why is that? Well, because of that million and a half words, or whatever it happens to be, 80% of them are scientific and technological words. And it's because English became the language of science in the 18th century that it suddenly took off in, in, and, and went ahead of all other languages. I mean, other languages that are scientifically literate, of course, have been able to catch up with English to that extent. But it's the technological side of the vocabulary that's the cause of it. And the fact that the language is now spoken so internationally means that there are now different varieties of it. And surely one of the definitions of a language, or one of the requirements of a language, is that people in different territories can understand each other. But aren't we getting to the point now where parts of it are so fragmented they can't understand one another, although apparently speaking the same language? Well, yes, that's happening, absolutely. What's happening in many parts of the world is that two levels of English are being used. Go to Singapore, for instance, and you'll hear standard English spoken, more or less the same sort of thing that you and I are using now. But you'll also hear on the streets of Singapore a local variety of English, Singlish, a bit like the varieties you were talking about in your film a few moments ago. And that you and I would not understand. So people are becoming more multi-dialectal in their own language, if you like. Standard English is the glue that binds all these varieties together. But at a local level, expressions of identity come with local dialects. I once heard somebody say that one of the reasons English was so popular as a language to learn as a lingua franca was because it was like Malay, very easy to speak badly. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, I've heard that argument too. No, there's only one reason why English has become a, a global language, and that is the power of the people who speak it. Of course, power means different things at different times. It meant political and military power once upon a time, and then it meant science power, as I said before. And then in the 19th century, it meant economic power power. And now in the 20th century, it was uh, cultural power. And all of these things have made English attractive to so many people. Two billion people speak English now. What is going to be the consequence of the emergence of China then as, as the new superpower? Will that put English into retreat? It might do. I mean, futurology questions about language are always really about the politics and society that underlie them. I mean, I think there are three languages that, depending upon what happens in the world, uh, could take over from English one day. Chinese is one, certainly. Spanish is another. Spanish is the fastest growing language in the world at the moment, uh, thanks to South and Central America. And of course, Arabic okay, is a thing. Okay, I'm going to have to interrupt you there, because I think we've now got Paul J.J. Pike Thank in Texas. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. You Excellent. come in loud good. and clear. Excellent. Good. Well, this is rubbish, this idea of yours, isn't it? It's not going to be the millionth tomorrow. <laughs> it might actually be the 10 millionth, right? It's like, uh, well, David Crystal has a, a good position on the number of words in a language, and, and we basically agree with, with a lot of what he says. You have I mean, no uh, shame. Why are you claiming... To, why are you claiming it's going to be the millionth word at 10.22 tomorrow, when apparently you could be out by a, a factor of 10? Well, not really. I mean, it depends how you look at it. I mean, like, you know, I have a long history in technology. And what we do in technology is we have a problem, we put bounds around it, and then we try to solve the problem. Now, if this started five years ago when we were looking at 
trying to figure out how many words were in English language in general. And, and we used, a, term, uh, we used a, 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 a way to do it. We went to the major unabridged dictionaries, saw how many words were in each of the dictionaries, came up with the base count and unabridged dictionaries of all the great English-speaking countries. And then what we did is we, that was about 650,000. And then we studied some historical linguistics on how words were added to the language. And I mean, there could be 10 million, but there's only 450 in a Merriam-Webster's unabridged. There's about, I don't know, five or 600,000 in the OED right now. And so what we did is use that at our base and then saw the so, new words that were percolating right. along, and we started adding them. I, I think and what you're saying that's is we, we get our estimate. Well, what, what you're saying is we shouldn't take this figure of the millionth word very seriously. No, you're supposed to take it very seriously so far as we look at it as a cultural <laughs> phenomenon, okay? That this is the first time we've had a global language on the planet in a history of, of, of speech. Okay, we've had, uh, you know, uh, French was a diplomatic yeah. language, um, Latin was a medieval language, but it's always been, but it's I'm, always been localized. We've just been looking, now we have a global language. We, yeah, absolutely. We've just been looking at a, a clock on your website, counting down uh, to the uh, millionth word right, at 10 according to our methodology. Yeah, un well, unfortunately, it's out by about 13 according hours. According to our methodology. Yeah, but even the clock yeah, on know, your website we're, we're trying to look into that. It's, Oh, it's technology. Give me a break. It's like we couldn't even get through to you with the, the, the television, right? I mean, that's just how it works. It's like the, 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 uh, the calculations are mathematics, okay? It's, it's pure mathematics that we extrapolated from the base number of words that were generally accepted in the dictionaries and All how right. many words are being added, and it comes out to a million. Okay. Well, look, thank you very much. I'm so sorry about the communication problems, but thank you for joining us, both of you. Thanks very much. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow morning's front page is one or two of them. Uh, the Times and indeed the Daily Mail have accusations against the Metropolitan Police that officers engaged in water.